can tell you those guys that they walked in here right down in my studio. I have no mm. idea who they are. Mm. No, no royal royal uh, cash um, stories. Lou Perez, uh, we talked about this before, but why not touch on it again? In the new a e documentary on Easy es death, Kid Frost said that Jerry Heller's doctor was the one who injected Easy e with AIDS. Now that was on Kid Frost. I don't know. Uh, Kid Frost said he went to some uh, acupunctures and got acupuncture. Um, and that was the reason why it happened. What happened? I don't know, man. I was a little detached at that point in time. Um, I was around for a minute, but then thing when, when, when easy and Jerry fell out, I wasn't around that much. So I can't speak on that. Good looking out, Marlon Cozy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My man, my man. Let's see. Um, he was he seven seals of revelation says did lonzo have a business relationship with harry o no i didn't have no i never sold dope <laughs> can't say i did but i know harry o i met him um oh i guess you uh, i back that i back up a little bit on that um when we did the documentary um welcome to death row that was about harry o De death row lydia harris everybody mm -hmm. I got called from a publicist friend of mine, Edna Sims, to be, hey, Lonzo, um, are you available this day to come down for premiere this documentary? I'm like, what documentary? The one that you're in. I'm not no documentary. Yes, you are. <laughs> I'm not. Yes, you are. Come down to the theater, so and so and so and so. Um, go down to the theater, and sure enough, first five minutes of Welcome to Death Row, you see my happy ass. <laughs> And the company that did it, that was Lee Savage. Um, I forgot to name his label, but Lee and I got cool and I became the street guy for um, Welcome to Death Row. And I, that's what they had cassettes, CDs, cassettes and DVDs. And I ran the streets for about, man, about two and a half, three months, selling these things all over the, all over the, all, to all my contacts. That's when the swap beats was still doing good. I had people overseas. I was making them. I was making money. I put on a add a dollar or two to it, and I was making money. And I was delivering the money to Lee. And somehow or another, Harry O got wind of what was going on. And I got a call through Terry Carter, the same brother that Suge ran over. We all from the same block, same neighborhood. Terry Carter called me up with with um with Harry O on the phone. I had never talked to Harry O before then. And uh, he asked me what was happening. I said, hey, man, how you doing? Blah, blah, blah. And yes, uh, he asked me, will I sell the CDs? I said, yeah. I'm, I said, how many you sold? I said, I probably sold about, eh, about 1,000, 1,500. How much money do you think? I said, I don't, I'm, I'm not sure, but you know, I gave him an estimated price. He said, what, what happened to the money? I said, I gave it to Lee. I got my cut, and Lee got, hit, Lee get, uh, got the rest of it. And uh, we talked for about five or six minutes, and that was pretty much it. He was still, he was, of course, he was in jail then. But that was pretty much it, folks. You know, um, we don't, we, we ain't no problem like that. It's just that I guess he was concerned about the streets, um, the street uh, sales. But those sales, people have to understand in back in the day, when you go to a distributor, it takes you 60, 90 days to get your money. Your stuff is manufactured. You ship it to the distributor. They ship it to the stores. The stores sell it, pay the distributor. The distributor got to give you his money. And sometimes you need some cash. And that was one of the things I was good for. I could, I knew I had all the contacts. So I used those same contacts and did did um did the street promo and sales for um my boy. Yeah. And, Matt Tree. Uh, Matt Tree. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And that's how we did it. Hey, man, we, we got time to open the phones up. Uh, yeah, I'll put the, uh, of course, dog, yeah. I, yeah. I put the number up there, so. I felt so bad last week, man. I, I took the whole week off, and um, I just worked on this system to make sure that we got all this stuff together. And it was something real simple, man. It was kind of my fault. It was my fault. I just went, I just kind of got a little flustered. But, yeah, folks, you might want to call in right quick. Hit us up. Oh, yeah, I posted it. And I put it in the description also for all the people who are viewing it. And I edited it uh, the uh, thing and posted it in there. So, yeah, 424-256-9211. Uh, 
Uh, let's see. Jamal Ferris says, this may be an easy question or a hard question. I don't know. It could go either way. Lonzo, what's your most memorable story from your house, if you can talk about it? Most man, there were so many memorable stories, man. Yeah, I that's mean, a hard one, huh? Uh, the parties we used to have, man. We had some parties. Uh, I mean, we had par- the, the shit that they did, the music videos, they got from me, okay? Um, I had I, my house, you can't put a, I can't put a, uh, when my house was built, I can't put a um, in ground pool in there. But the owner of the club gave me a huge above ground pool. Okay, huge above ground pool. Mm, one, of other, one, of, one of the other things um, I did was I first bought my house. I put a jacuzzi in here, so I got a pool and a jacuzzi. Okay, I got a pool and a jacuzzi. We talking about ninety? I got moved here in eighty six, ninety 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 one. I got a jacuzzi in the pool, okay? Jeff mm-hmm. Rowe ain't formed yet, I ain't, I ain't mistaken. And we have some parties. We have some parties. We got it, girls. We got it going on, okay? Drain them wasn't here. This is me and my boys from the hood, okay? And we would have some all-day, all-night barbecue pool parties, and it just was a hell of a time. And um, I had to give it up, though, man. I had to give it up because, <laughs> boy, <laughs> Brothers, brothers don't know when to stop. The so, stuff you found the next morning in the jacuzzi, I, I could have Man, it was came time to clean up the yard, but nobody here. When it came time to clean up the pool, wasn't nobody here. When it came time to pay the light bill, wasn't nobody here. Came time to pay the pool, I mean, uh, the water bill, wasn't nobody here. And I'd cleaned up the pool, I mean, I cleaned up the yard every day myself, me and my little helper. And um, must around here, I'm in the pool. And because I had a tree over my that was over my over my uh over my pool, it kind of covered my pool up. And I had to get in the pool and clean it. It was cold, no heater. <laughs> Walking, and I stepped on something and I stooped down to pick it up. There was a bag of crack cocaine. God damn. A bag about an eight ball of crack cocaine. Because crack cocaine does not melt in water. If you didn't know, now you know. Okay. Damn. Crack cocaine does not melt in water. Powder cocaine will melt in water. Crack cocaine, that shit will last through the uh, 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 nuclear blast, okay? <laughs> and this is this is when they just started making talking about making that law about crack cocaine go to penitentiary, powder cocaine go to rehab, okay? And I wasn't about to go to penitentiary behind somebody else's powder cocaine, I mean, correct cocaine. Mm-hmm. And to the fella, hey man, you know, I found some crank, some cocaine in the pool, man. Oh, what, 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 what did it look like? It was a white fool. Anyway, <laughs> that's when I realized I had that. That was that was strike one. Strike two. At that time, I had West Coast Record Distributors. I'd get up in the morning like I had a job, go sit in the office at West Coast Record Distributors. I'd come home about three or four. I come over to the house. Gate's been locked up. House locked up. I look over my house and I see smoke coming out of my backyard. What the fuck? Something on fire. Niggas in the hop fist and they barbecue with a pool party in my backyard. And I ain't home. Strike two. <laughs> Strike two. Okay. Oh, they got girls in the pool. They're having an after after party. It's like Tuesday. <laughs> after after party at my house. Anybody call me and say, hey, man, I'm on my way. Do you, you mind if we bring a couple of girls by the pond, by the pool? Nothing. 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 And number th- last but not least, I'm in Department of uh, Department of uh, Water and Power, and I had to drain the pool like three times to clean it because this 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 tree just kept on dropping all kind of stuff in there. I didn't have a cover for it. And DWP sent me a demand. First of all, they cut off my water, and they told me in order to get my water back on, I had to give them fifteen hundred dollars, fifteen hundred dollars deposit. And I asked everybody. That was partying in my backyard. That's old crack cocaine. Okay. Hey man, can I get a hundred dollars a piece on this on this uh, water bill? And everybody told me they didn't have it. I said, I tell you what, we're gonna do. I'm gonna drain this pool. We won't be having no more pool parties. And that's what I did. I drained the pool, and I called the uh, the metal man, the bit aluminum man, and they got it, and that was it. And I've been happy ever since. <laughs> I just kept I kept my jacuzzi though. That was for me and my girls. Love that shit. Love that shit. Black that. 
Black Taxes was Lonzo a pimp daddy during the NWA days? Uh, I wasn't a pimp daddy, but I damn sure was a player. I, yeah. wasn't, I was a damn sure. I was damn sure was a player. You should be lying. We got folks. Anybody want to want to holler right quick, folks? Yeah, Boy, give us a call. Give us a call. We'll stick around after seven if you guys want to give us a call. Right here. I got it right here. I got it right here. There it is. We working today, folks. Now I'm only gonna be here for a minute. Uh, how, how much time you got, Dusty? Uh, shit, I 15, 20 more minutes, man. I'm good. Well, we're gonna see what's happening. We're gonna see what's happening. Um, anybody want to call in and ask a question or something like that? Go direct. Feel free. 424-256-9211. We are also live on the Homegrown Media Network. If you have Roku at the house, folks, if you have Roku. You can go on right now and look at us on your television set. Kick back. You got to look at your phone. You got to look at your computer. You can go to Roku. Go to um, go to um, uh, channel search. Uh, type in Homegrown Media Network and then add channel. Um, it'll be right there, and we'll be we up and rolling. We got about a yeah, it's about a twenty second delay from what I'm saying now to what, what you see on the screen, but it's all good. I'm looking at it right now. I'm looking at the feed right now. And we're looking real good on television. I've been working on this all day, man. I mean, all week. So I definitely uh proud of this shit. Another sense of accounting. Now, without Alonzo, what's up with you? Alonzo, it's Maxwell. I interviewed you, I think it was like about a month ago. Can you hear him, Dusty? Yes. What up, Maxwell? Maxwell. What's going on, man? Hey, hey, you know, one question I didn't get to ask you when I interviewed you. Who did the white guy voice? On a lot of the NWA records, the white guy on the NWA records. Yeah, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, the guy who did. Uh, let's, yeah, let's describe a certain character, a female with an attitude. You know that that guy. Man, I couldn't tell you. I, I, it it might have been Donovan. It could have been Donovan, the um, engineer. Uh, it could have been Donovan. I'm not sure. I don't know for sure. I wasn't in the studio at that time. Um, I do know that oh. Crazy D did all the, all the Mexican voices, but I don't know who did the white voices. I mm-hmm. ask you to my theme, though. I can, I get your answer. I was I'm talking. Let me see here. I, I may find it. Hang tight. Hang tight. Stay right there. I think I may have found. Let's see. Uh, Hold on. I don't think the line. Does anyone know who provided the lines? I always assumed it was Ice Cube. No, it wasn't Ice Cube. I'm just reading through answers of because uh, this question has definitely been answered. It sounds to my ear like the actor Vincent Donofrio. He played a racist cop in Strange Days. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll try to find that for you, my man. Hmm. I would love that. I, cool, I, cool. Appreciate I, it, I man. Thank you for calling. No problem. We'll okay. talk to you later. All right, now, peace. Yes. Yeah. Now he has me, me curious. That's, see, that's a hip hop nerd question right there. That's, I like that. Guy. Yeah, that's a hip hop nerd question that's, right there. Who was the that's some, shit I'll be sitting, that's some shit I'll just randomly be thinking at two o'clock in the morning when I should be going to sleep because I got to be up in, in three hours. I need to I need to put a, a I'll switch on my, on my brain because I can't do it. So, dude, I, sometimes I'm up at two o'clock in the morning just thinking. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's a Gemini thing, dude. Yeah. Right. I, I gotta literally tell my brain, okay, go to all right, dog. Turn it down, turn it off. And I'll, you know, but that's a good thing. That's a good thing. I got um, my anyway. Yeah, thank you guys for calling. Hold on one sec. Damn, my computer just froze. Jay Ross, I see you, baby. Much love to oh, you. Thank shout you. out, Jay Roots. Jay Roots. Okay. I yeah, like Jay Roots. Make sure you guys check out check out his channel on YouTube. I had a chance to be on his show uh, last uh, a few days ago. And had a good time talking about boxing. They, they have a lot of boxing content. Boxing is my favorite sport. So it was really a good time uh, getting to, to actually meet Jay Roos Theory. Um, yeah, man. Thank you so much for always loving the support, dude. Much love. Thank you, Doc. I really appreciate it. 